Dave Aranda, yes, that Dave Aranda is cooking up an elite recruiting class for Baylor football. This is Locked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another episode of Locked on Baylor brought to you by FanDuel and thank you for making it your first listen today and every day. We're shifting our focus at least for some of this show. There was there was some breaking news that happened right before I went on this interview with Will. So we're going to talk about that a little bit later in the show. But first we're talking football and with me today is Will Turboff of 24/7 Bears Illustrated. So he is covering Baylor on the boots on the ground here in Texas about all these guys you're going to be seeing playing for Baylor in the next couple of years. And it was a big day for them on Sunday. Conference championships going on in the NFL. But Junior Day over at McLean Stadium for Baylor. And Will, I'm going to start you off with a softball here. Is Can you explain to the folks, because it's bigger now than ever, what a Junior Day actually is? Yeah, so funny enough, a Junior Day is not just juniors um it's it's a recruiting event that basically every program in the country does uh to get their top targets out uh it's mainly juniors i want to say about 45 of the 75 ish guys that were there uh, are 2025 prospects but they had a lot of 2026 guys they had a couple 27s that they really like but yeah it's just a, a huge event an all-day thing uh where they aren't worried about a game going on they aren't worried about you know, football players not being in the building. Uh, it's one of the only times with the recruiting schedule based on the dead periods that, you know, you're able to have everyone in your building, uh, you know, families there. It's, it's, it's really a, a great tool for, for programs like Baylor, especially. Yeah. And so kind of going off of that, you think this is worth more for the program itself or the players coming in? Because I, I get it. You know, there's only so much you could do as a coach with 75 kids in there, you know, remembering names and taking the pictures and everything. And it, it does allow for a chance more so than a lot of other recruiting events where a lot of prospective players are with meeting a lot of prospective players. So from that end, does it, does it value more? Is it more valuable for the players or for the coaching staff on days like this? I think it really depends on the player um, with, with high profile guys, it's definitely for the program, you know, to get a guy like Chad Woodfork or Camorian Morgan or all these top 100 guys uh, that are, you know, probably never going to go to Baylor if not for something like this. Um, it's huge for the program. They were, you know, not the only team that scheduled a junior day event on Sunday, uh, but they got those guys out there. And with these more low-profile guys, it gives you a chance to, to talk with Aranda and talk with your positional coach for five to ten minutes, see where you're at, see where you know, you've gotten since, since the last time they evaluated you. Uh, so it really goes both ways. But, but definitely for the program, uh, you know, when, when you're talking about guys that are better than basically anyone they've recruited since, since Coach Aranda's been there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and I know you've gotten to talk to some of these guys who were there on Sunday. And what what's just kind of the consensus you're hearing out of what came out of this this junior day? I know it's probably not a lot of negative, but is there anything you're hearing that's different from other places or just overall upbeat? Yeah, yeah I don't want to be cheesy, but it is, you know, everyone's saying it's it's a it's a new feel at Baylor. It's a new mindset. And it really is. And we knew that was going to be the case uh, once they did the entire overhaul of of the offensive staff and and mainly brought in guys that were elite recruiters at other spots, guys like Keenan Hall, guys like Chris Kapilovich. Um, we knew that was going to kind of be the focus from now on, and they're moving towards getting more active in the transfer portal and NIL. Uh, and I think recruits really saw that. They saw the guys that came in from the portal uh, yesterday at, at, or Sunday at the Junior Day event. Like there's, there's definitely from players, uh, you know, realization that, that Baylor isn't, you know, down and out like everyone thought they were a couple months ago. So there's there's definitely been a mindset shift and there's definitely been players taking notice. I mean, if you told me two, three months ago that they would have had the list they did, you know, in late January, I, I would have told you there was no way. You, you kind of led me right into the next question, Will, which is just perfect. But like, is this so it is surprising to hear in a positive way this kind of response and this kind of class they're putting together, or at least on paper after a three and nine season. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty unbelievable. Uh, 
you know, when you're talking about going after the heads of, of the entire coaching staff at the end of the season and you're thinking, oh, well, you know, I can tell you, I thought it was going to be a down year in recruiting and, and we'll see how it plays out. Uh, but if they're definitely off to a hot start, they've got the number one class in the Big 12. No one saw that coming. Um, so, like I said, Keenan Hall, Kapilovich, I mean, all these guys, Dallas Baker is still, uh, you know, an elite recruiter. So they're, they, you know, they're showing people that not only are they going to make it another year, uh, but they're going to, they're on the upswing, you know, they're, they're just going to get better from here on. Yeah. And so that kind of leads me to the question of how does this work or how does this benefit the Dave Aranda camp? You know, I mean, he was all but fired a, a month and a half ago or almost two months ago. Now Mac Rose decides to, to stick with him. And part of it was because they had a young core, but something that Dave has struggled with at Baylor was recruiting out of high school. So with a young core and now a, the inspiring 2025 class, do you think that helps Baylor as a program in terms of stability? You know, that's a, it's a tough one because – you know, these guys are getting a year older, so we are. I feel like there's going to be a lot of progress um, with the guys that were standouts, um, but there's still a lot of work to be done. I think if if you know we get they get four or five wins here in the next season, I think there's a chance that they look at that roster, they see the guys that are coming in, and, and think, okay, let's let's give them another year, let's give them another two years, uh, just based on the fact that they're going to have a great roster, and you know everyone's going to be loaded up in this new Big Twelve, but you know, if you land some of these guys that they're looking at in 25 and, and, you know, some of the guys they've gotten in 24 are really underrated in my book. Um, so I think the roster could be pretty stable and that all changes, uh, you yeah. know, if you make a staff change. So it's going to be a really interesting conversation. And uh, like you, I really have no idea what's going to happen. <laughs> so we're just going to have to find out. We're just going to have to let it play out, man. Just yeah. letting it play out. But in terms of that, it kind of a side question to that. Is it surprising you not only the class that they've put together or are recruiting, but also just the fact that there really isn't a ton of stability right now? You know, we're talking about stability down the line, but even with the instability and the question marks surrounding head coach and coaching staff going into next season, does that add more to the surprise of, of the kids they've got coming in for junior days? Oh, for sure. I mean, I, I covered Nebraska to start out uh, – with 24 seven sports going into the 2022 season. And at the time there were a lot of questions around, you know, Scott Frost and we all know how that ended lost George Southern got fired in, in September. Uh, but I remember that summer there was a huge dip, even though they had hired some new people, um, recruits just weren't that interested. And, and I think it's a much different scenario with, with Baylor. You're in Texas, your talent pool is just so much bigger. The guys that can get to Waco, you know, are much more talented than, you know, the guys from Iowa and, and Missouri and things like that. They're great players, but just not what you see in Texas. Um, and I think Baylor, like I said, they're, they're saying we're here to stay. Uh, you know, we're going to be here until they tell us to leave. And, you know, they're going with it. They're going with it. Today's episode of Locked on Baylor is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. We are officially on countdown to the Super Bowl, a.k.a. the best sportsbook day of the year. If you're like me, the Super Bowl, Super Bowl Sunday, really the whole build up to it, it's all about scoring the best seat on the couch, okay? The best snacks while they're still hot and placing some super bets. FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a W or two, or three, or three. Even though your team isn't, you can be winning. Not only can you bet on who will win the Super Bowl, of course, but FanDuel also has bets for which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, uh, what color the Gatorade bath is going to be, how long the national anthem is going to be, so much more. New customers join today, and you'll get $200 in bonus bets with your first bet of $5 or more wins. So, again, that's $200 in bonus bets, if your first bet of $5 or more wins. So just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. So that part specifically about Dave Aranda before we headed to the break there, but looking at some of the guys who are 
helping him out in particular. The first one I want to mention is Jake Spavadol. He, he's already kind of put out there that they're going to play a fun style, up-tempo kind of offense. And you had kind of mentioned in the first segment about some of the personnel changes that have helped Baylor uh, in terms of that recruiting. Just in general, because you've seen recruiting at a couple different places, how excited does that get high school kids when you hear, oh boy, up-tempo, quick offense, a lot of points. Is, does that help just on paper? Oh, for sure. You say the words air raid and these kids are you know, <laughs> asking when they can enroll. Um, I know Ashton Jones, uh, one of their current commits at a Shadow Creek in Houston, uh, that was a big part of, of the reason that he committed. Uh, Adam Schobel, the, the quarterback commit, I mean, he was just thrilled uh, with the hiring of Spavital. He, he's got this, you know, had this really tight bond with uh, with Sean Bell, and there were a lot of questions on if Schobel would stick once once Bell left, but it seems like him and Spavital have developed a, a pretty close relationship in the last month or so. Um, and and you saw the receivers that were on that, on that junior day list, and even like everyone on offense and everyone in general uh, is just excited about kind of a different style from Baylor. Yeah, and I, we've hinted at it a few times. You were surprised at how good the list is of guys who went in there. What what were some of the names that that jumped off the page for you in terms of like, wow, he, he's got interest all these places. He's going to Baylor's junior day. This this could be legit. Yeah, Chad Woodfork, who's a guy that I mentioned uh, out of Summer Creek. Uh, he's a he's a top 50 player, you know, composite top 50 player in the country. Um, and that was he, he did include Baylor in his top schools list a few weeks ago. But to be honest with you, I didn't think there was much to it. I, I didn't think he would make it on campus. Oklahoma had a junior day this week. Um, TCU had one. You know, there were other schools, like I mentioned, in the region uh, that had better seasons last year. And Baylor kind of beat him out, and and that's credit to to Caleb Collins, to Christian Robinson, that whole defensive staff. They stayed together, and they said, "Let's not play, you know, let's not play this recruiting game at a Baylor level. Let's play it like we're trying to get the best guys in the country." And that's what they're doing. Um, I, I got a few more. Uh, <laughs> go Morgan. ahead, go ahead. Yeah, Kamori and Morgan out of Red Oak uh, is another one. They've the staff, uh, I want to say Keenan Hall and Jared Anderson have done a great job of, of uh, developing a relationship with the Red Oak staff. They got him out. They're going to have Taz Williams next week. He didn't make it to junior day. He was out at, at Penn State. Uh, they've got a great group of guys at that school. And if you can land one of them, there's a great chance you can land a few of them. I don't think it's much of a surprise that he was there, but London Smith out of University High uh, will probably be the most important recruitment maybe in the history of Baylor football. I mean, in a while, at least. Yeah. 2026. So they've got a lot of time. Um, but he's a guy that, that could finish as you know, a top five receiver in the country. Uh, he, he could be number one. I mean, I have taken a look at his film and, and to be ranked that high, uh, that early, you know, at university high is, it's not something that you see too often. So yeah. if they, if Dallas Baker's still around, you know, when, when it's his time to sign, if they can get that done, like I said, maybe the most important in the, the history of Baylor football. Yeah, and he's someone I talked about last week. He's someone I get to see around here in, in Waco. What kind of pops off the page for you about London Smith? I mean, obviously just a, a playmaker. Yeah, it's the size, the speed. He's a guy that, that you haven't really seen wearing green and gold in a long time, maybe ever. Yeah, um, He's a hometown kid. You know, you get something like that. It's very similar to Dylan Riola in Nebraska. Uh, where it's this guy that has ties to the program is thinking about going to other places, but if he gets drawn back to home, it has this ripple effect uh, that you you can't really replace with you know even getting the number one player in the country. It's it's getting that guy that has has known your program, has gone to your games his whole life. You know, parents are involved at the school. Uh, those are more important in my mind uh, than getting any five star. And he might he might very well be a five star, so it'd be yeah. a, a double. <laughs> And, and talking about that, you know, he's just one of a few names you listed there that are, you know, top 50 guys who could go into the top 20, top 10. That's just surprising for Baylor. I mean, we got to put it into perspective. They're coming off of three and nine, three losing seasons in the last four years. Things are going down. So what is it that you're hearing that might be separating Baylor from some other schools to just get these kids in the door? I think it's, uh, you know, the facilities is a big part the involvement and the 
NIL program is a big part. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like that isn't a big deal. And, and Aranda and the whole staff can, can say, you know, that it's not a big deal, but now they've realized that it is and they're putting it into action. And I think you saw based on Aranda's press conferences late in the season, early in the off season, uh, he had that realization, you know, if, if you want to stick around, if you want to develop an elite program, like, like the goal was when he was hired, uh, you need to, to, you know, be on the status quo. And, and that's, that's NIL. That's going out to every single high school. Uh, that's, you know, being a guy like, like Sark or, you know, so many other coaches in the area that have a relationship with every single high school coach that they've ever met. Um, and that, and that's what it goes down to. It's, you know, there's been a lot of a lot of debate on on Aranda's abilities as a recruiter, and I think, again, he's just had that realization. You got to lock in. And kind of going off of that, because NIL is always a buzz topic. Everyone loves hearing about it, and we have just heard all kinds of different things about Baylor, whether they're good or not. We don't know really. Um, so you talk to a lot of high school football players out there, just in general. How much? does it mean for NIL is, are we talking like 50, 50, they care, they don't, or, you know, 80, 20, they, they have to have it. How, how much does it play in to the average high school football players minds when they come to make this decision? Yeah, I'll be honest with you. That's not a, not a conversation I have with a lot of guys, just kind of okay. out of respect for, for their situation, what they're going through. And it's legally can't be talked about a lot. <laughs> yeah, so. well, sure. The number figures. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I know that, when I talk to these kids and I mention, hey, you know, Baylor is saying that they're going to be more active in NIL, they're they're going to be more active in and what these powerhouse programs are doing, that excites them because sure. you know some of these guys would go to Baylor for free and some of them will. Um, I mean, yeah. we're not talking about every single player getting a hundred thousand dollars or a car. Uh, you know, at a program like Baylor, even with the NIL program boosted, it's not it's not something that's you know they're not going to be a Texas, they're not going to be even an SMU, just because of the money that's funneled into the athletics program, the money that's funded into this collective, um, they know that it's it can't be a top 10, top five level, uh, but if they can get the most they can, that's what impresses Baylor, that they're actually trying uh, to get the most money, and I think that's what they're doing now. And speaking of SMU in there, they've given Baylor what seems to be a big help in terms of the recruiting game in, in Keenan Hall. How much of an impact has he made in early days here at Baylor? I can say it um, pretty clearly. Keenan Hall has been the biggest addition to the Baylor staff. Um, they, I think they knew that from the start, but just the abilities that he has in, in the Metroplex is insane. I mean, this guy, like I was just saying, has a relationship with every high school coach that he's ever talked to. He's got a relationship with every player he's talked to. Um, and he's got goals to, to get these guys that he was able to, you know, beat out the LSUs and the Texas and the A&Ms at SMU. And it's, he knows it's a little bit harder, Baylor, uh, but it's just that same mindset of we have to win these guys or else we're not going to be here anymore. Um, so having him and, you know, having a lot of guys committed to SMU that might be interested in Baylor is, has been pretty fun. And speaking of one of those who he had as a commitment to SMU, and that is a guy I've gotten to see a few times at the 4A level, that is Chap Tyler Chapel Hill quarterback slash athlete Demetrius Brisbane. Uh, now there are rumors, and we see it on 24-7, of that crystal ball going to Baylor instead. So, A, where do you see him playing in terms of a position at the next level and be just how much of a player is Baylor for his signature now that Keenan Hall is there. Yeah. Taking a guy that has played quarterback his whole high school career is something that Baylor has been kind of weary of uh, just because you're not sure of how he's going to translate into a new position. I do know that they see him as a safety right now. Um, and I think he's been slotted in a few different places at camps. Uh, but right now it seems like that's where they like him. And again, with a guy like him, you can wait a year, get him in a few different groups in, in the summer, in the spring, um, see where he fits best and, and kind of take it from there. But man, if, if Baylor lands this one, it's a huge addition to the class, uh, not only because of the talent, but just kind of the ripple effect it has in, in guys in that area. You know, getting Central Texas guys like that, it's, it's, a huge, it's a huge deal, keeping guys close to home. And like I said, the, 
the SMU commit list is is not too shabby right now, and he's got a lot of friends uh, on there. So it'd be it would be huge for Baylor, and we'll just have to wait a few days, maybe. Oh, that is that. That's what I'm having a tough time waiting for. Will I, I've seen him. I've seen the tape. I've seen him in the foray. The kid can play. Uh, anyway, Will, thank you so much for coming on today. You are following this year round on 24 seven and bears illustrated to see who Baylor's got coming in. Where can people find you? How can they find your work? Yeah, right here at my Twitter at Will Turboff and uh, bears illustrated Twitter at Baylor bears, two, four, seven and 24 seven sports.com slash bears illustrated. So get on. We're, I mean, we've got an exciting few weeks on the site and it's only, it's only going to get better. Really, uh, really happy to see the Baylor fan base kind of tap into what we're doing and, you know, set it on the board last night. We're not going to let you down. Yes. Yes, man. We'll certainly be following along. Will, thank you so much for coming on and joining the show. We're going to have you on at other points too, just so you know. Uh, we've got some big news out of Baylor women's basketball though. That is coming up after this. We've got such fun sports discussions going on. I know that's why you guys come here, but I'm going to have to get serious for a little bit. Talk about real life. Because according to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade. That's frightening, frightening, guys. I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than if one of my loved ones or, or, or Will, who's done such a great job on the show today, got sick while there's a supply chain issue that kept them from the life-saving medications they need. Thankfully, we'll be okay because of Jace Medical. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics that treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, stuff that could happen to any one of us, y'all. So visit jacemedical.com and complete that physician encounter. It's going to be reviewed by a real board-certified physician, and your medications are going to be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It has never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com, that's J-A-S-E medical.com, and use the offer code Locked On to get $20 off that first order. Some exciting news that broke like literally seconds before I got Will on the horn uh, to do the interview. I, I'm, I, if you're watching this, I already went live with it yesterday because it's such big news. But Baylor has announced that Brittany Griner, the greatest women's basketball player ever to play, greatest basketball player to ever play at Baylor, I think fits here. And on the Mount Rushmore of Baylor athletics, no doubt is getting her number 42 retired to the Foster Pavilion Rafters. That's going to come on February 18th, pregame at a 3 o'clock Saturday game against Texas Tech. Guys, this is this is so exciting, man. Like, I, I'm genuinely, I'm so, so happy to, to see this happen. It is so long overdue. Uh, inexplicably overdue. Um, and I know there was problems between you know, her and, and Kim Mulkey after, after Brittany left and, you know, the things that came out about that. And, um, obviously the being detained in the Russian prison, um, kind of divided a lot of Baylor folks. And one of the people, you know, Kim Mulkey, her actual coach, who was of course at LSU by the time this happened, wouldn't say a word about it. And Nikki Collin, who is now the Baylor coach who never coached Brittany Griner, um, was in full vocal support. And it, honestly, I, I'm not here to talk about Kim Mulkey, but it's scary how little she talked about it. Um, whereas Nikki Collin, great representative of Baylor University and, and great preserver of the history here at Baylor, um, was the one showing her love. And, and she mentioned it from the beginning, like right when she got here, she couldn't believe that Brittany Griner's number was not retired. Uh, Baylor does have six of those. I think is what the release said. This will this will be the seventh. Um, it is obviously way long over two, um, and like I, I can't stress this enough. When you're talking about the best athletes ever at Baylor, it's RG three, Mike Singletary, Michael Johnson, and Brittany Griner. Four-time Defensive Player of the Year in the conference, three-time Player of the Year, um, four or three-time All-American, two-time National Player of the Year, and of course the Talis Woman on the forty and O National Championship team 
in 2012. Well, I was going to read the nice article written by Zach Smith on the Waco Trib, but um, they've put it behind a paywall. So I will go to the press release, which I love. But this kind of has the quotes that I was looking for. Um, Brittany Griner was reached for comment. She said, I'm honored to return home to Baylor and celebrate where so much of my journey started. And I, I feel so bad because I know that that's not something she could have said like the whole 10 plus 11 years that she's left Baylor. I, I don't know if she ever felt welcome to come back. And that's like, I'm so excited that she is feeling that way now. Uh, she said, I'm, I'm grateful to coach Nikki and the entire Baylor community. And I'm looking forward to the opportunity to be back on campus, spend time with the team and have my family beside me to share this incredible moment. Sikkim bears. Mac Rhodes, we're excited to welcome Brittany back to Baylor and share this special day with her. There's no doubt she's one of the most decorated student athletes of Baylor athletics history. And we're thrilled the timing has worked out for all of us to celebrate and honor her. She always has been and always will be a significant member of the Baylor family. I, man, that's such exciting stuff. I'll, I'll One more quote here, Nikki Collin. We're excited to have Brittany back on campus and honor her with the retirement of her jersey. I have been saying this since I arrived at Baylor. Hey, I was kind of on this. Uh, that she deserves to have her jersey retired, and I want to make sure that happened when the timing is right. Uh, opening of the Foster Pavilion, NBA, WNBA offseason, blah, blah, blah. She's one of the best basketball players in Baylor history, and we're thrilled the time has come to celebrate Brittany and all of her accomplishments. I shouldn't even have to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. No matter what you think, what you think about the Russian situation with her, if you can't be happy about this, you're not a Baylor fan. You're just not. And that's great. You can put on the gear and give some money to Baylor. That's fantastic. But A, you're not a Baylor fan if you're going to poo-poo this and say that she doesn't deserve it and actively oppress it. You know, because I know there are people in the Facebook comments right now talking about it. If you don't feel happy for her and for this university, if you don't feel that this is right, then you're not a Baylor fan. Um, I am so excited. I'm going to be out there. I, I'm going to have to buy a ticket, but I, I don't care. February 18th, 3 p.m. against Texas Tech. We're going to have more on this this week because this is such a monumental occasion for, obviously, for Brittany Griner, for the Baylor basketball program, for, for Baylor athletics. Finally, this university as a whole is, is embracing what Brittany means to to this place and to this to this athletic program again. Because you want to talk about the year of the bear? Everyone talks about the year of the bear, 2011, 2012. Yeah, men had a great season. They went to the Elite Eight. Baseball had the great winning streak. Didn't go to the College World Series. Men didn't go to the Final Four. The women won the national championship. There was no year of the bear without Brittany Griner. And to be quite honest, I don't know if this program has half the mystique it has without Brittany Griner. They were, had already won a national championship. Kim Mulkey was already going to be a Hall of Fame coach. We know that. But when you have a generational talent, one that people will be talking about 50, 60, 100 years from now in this sport, that makes a difference. Brittany, we are so, so, so happy to have you back. So happy. I, I can't wait for this, for, for her to have her moment, for Baylor women's basketball to have that moment. And to kind of close the door in what was an ugly chapter because it never should have gotten that divisive and it never should have been a situation where Brittany felt like she was not welcome back here in a place where she will always be an all-time legend on and off the court. 42, should have been retired before she even graduated before she ever stepped foot off this campus, before she ever played a WNBA game. Better late than never. I understand why, to some extent, why they couldn't do it, but not enough. I, I'm so excited. No one should ever wear 42, and kids should be able to come to the Foster Pavilion and see the best basketball player ever to play at Baylor up in the rafters, at least the jersey. That's going to do it for us today. Thank you for Will Turboff for coming off the show. Uh, we will have more coverage on this Brittany Griner jersey retirement. I probably went over a little bit of time today because I was so excited to talk about that. Anyway, we'll be back tomorrow. Be sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. It's your team. 
every day. Thank you for making it your first listen today and every day. Locked on Baylor.